Okay, so another new week brings another new TTS model. And this one I've been playing with over the weekend. I think it's a lot of fun. It's an open source model. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about the model, but also I really want to focus on how you can build some things with this model to get some really good results out of it. So the model that I'm talking about is called Chatterbox. You may have heard people talking about it online. It's created by a company called Resemble AI. So they've actually been around for a while doing TTS and doing a whole bunch of things around fake detection of voices and images and stuff like that. So you can see that they've got a sort of post up about this. It's an MIT licensed model. It has a thing called emotion control, which we'll look at, which is really cool. It's actually a quite small model. It's only 500 million parameters compared to things like deer and stuff like that, which are actually much bigger, obviously not as small as Kokoro that we looked at, but this has some really nice abilities around voice cloning. And this is something that I know a lot of people have asked me about in the comments for some of the other TTS models, like the Gemini one, et cetera, is are we able to clone our own voice or clone someone's voice? And this model lets you do that, and it lets you do that very well as well. So they show in here that you can basically do voice cloning with like five seconds of reference audio. Now, if we come in and take a listen to some of the examples that they've got, we can see some of the key things around here. So what they're basically doing is conditioning a voice. So you're going to basically clone a voice, but really what you're doing is actually conditioning on a voice. And then you've got a number of different things that you can do with that voice. So let's take a look at an example of this. You know, grandpa goes around and he does his business in public because grandpa isn't shady. Any of your uh, scientists working on? Okay. And now let's listen to this text being conditioned on that voice. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix legions and loyal servant to the true emperor. So you can see that it definitely retains elements of that. If we look at a different voice. Yes, and you're right. Of course he will be. You'll see me in my hotel office before you leave this evening. You can see that. Okay, let's listen to the output. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north. So you see that it's very good at catching sort of the timbre, the tonality, and even the sort of reverb of the room and transferring all of that across. So one of the other things that they have in here is this exaggeration control. So you can think of this as just turning up the emotion, turning up or turning down the emotion. So if we look at this. Yes, and you're right. Of course he will be. You'll see me in my hotel. Okay. So let's listen to it at 0 0.5 exaggeration. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. And Okay. So you can hear that one. What about at 1.0? Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. Any of you... Okay, so you can see that the emotion is being turned up on it as we go through. Everybody be cool. This is a robbery. Any okay, so this is really what makes this model unique, is this whole sort of idea of zero-shot voice cloning, but also unique emotion control. And you're able to basically dial this in, which we'll look at when we go through and look at the code sections. The other things with this release, which are quite nice, is that they've basically wrapped it in a pip install. So it's actually very easy to get this going in code. And it also has the ability that you can watermark this. So if you want to basically prove that this was fake and this wasn't said by someone, you can actually watermark it. And we'll have a look at this in the code of both how you can do the watermark and then also how you can actually check for a watermark in there as well. So just quickly looking at how this compares to some of the other things that are out there, it really is the only sort of open source release when they compare to Eleven Labs and OpenAI, etc. Because it's an open source release, you can basically use it on-prem. You can run it yourself without having to pay per token or per word generated, etc. This last bit was really interesting too, of basically how they compared this to 11 labs. So clearly, I guess they perceive the 11 labs as being the number one, as being the sort of main provider of TTS and voice cloning and stuff like that out there at the moment. And they're basically showing that their model is preferred more than the 11 labs versions of voices. So let's jump into the code, have a play with it. Also, we can have a look at like what you can actually build with this as well. Okay, so if we come over to Hugging Face, we can see that the model now is up on Hugging Face. There's a bunch of things about it here that are kind of interesting. 
like the size of it being 500 meg, and also that it's trained on 500,000 hours of clean data, as well as some tips to how to get the best out of it, etc. And finally, they talk about it being watermarked outputs. So that's something specifically that I want to look at in here as well. So let's jump into the collab and have a look at this. So once you've got your libraries set up, etc., it's pretty similar to a normal sort of transformers model. And you can just bring in this pre-trained Chatterbox TTS system. And once you load that, that will just automatically download the weights and set it all up for you. All right, so to generate audio out, it's actually very simple. We just basically set up the text that we want, and then we can just pass it into model.generate and pass in the text. So for the simplest form of doing this. Now, you can see that I've got quite a lot of text in that first bit, and you'll see that with using a T4 GPU, it can actually generate text pretty quickly in here. So let's just take a listen to this. Text to speech. TTS, technology converts written text into spoken audio. It's fundamental for accessibility, powering screen readers, navigation systems, and virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. Standard TTS uses generic, synthetic voices generated by algorithms based on general speech patterns. Voice cloning, however, takes this- Okay, so you can see that that voice is actually very good. Now, currently the way that they've got it set up, you can't actually go in and sort of select a voice or change sort of the embedding of the voice easily. But what you can do is you can add in some exaggeration to the voice. So just before we go and look at that, one of the things I want to point out is that with this particular input, it actually cuts off the end of it. So you're looking at about 40 seconds of audio that you can produce out. So you want to make your strings that you're passing into this roughly 30 seconds of audio or so just to be safe. All right, now jumping in and looking at the exaggeration, you can see that while we can just pass the text into model.generate, we can also pass in exaggeration and this CFG weight. So this CFG weight is this classifier-free guidance weight. So this is what we sort of looked at with the Dia model. If you remember, one of the issues that made it constantly sort of speed up was this whole issue around the CFG in there. So in this case, we can play around with both of these. Now, generally, the more exaggeration, you will want to sort of reduce the CFG weight. So I think for default, they're sort of 0.5 each. But you can see that if we start to put in the more exaggeration, just reminding you listening to the voice up here, cloning, however, takes this a significant step further. Leveraging advanced AI and deep learning voice cloning. Rep okay, so you can see that there's this quite normal voice. Let's listen to the one here. Text to speech, TTS. Technology converts written text into spoken audio. It's fundamental for accessibility, powering screen readers, navigation systems, and virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. Standard TTS uses generic synthetic voices. So you can see here that while it's become more enunciated and it's sort of exaggerating the words a little bit, because we didn't change anything here, it's actually also starting to speed up quite a bit. So to take this to the extreme, we can even do things like where we put this exaggeration really high. This is probably way more than you would normally do, but then bring the CFG weight down a lot more. Text to speech, Jake test, technology, converts written text into spoken audio. It's fundamental for accessibility, powering screen readers, navigation systems, and virtual assistants, not Siri or Alexa. Okay, so you can hear this. That's really over the top, right? With the exaggeration. But because we brought the, the CFG weight down, we're able to control the speed, at least to some element. All right, so what if you want to change the actual voice in here? So the best way to do this, and this is the key killer feature of this particular model, is that you can do voice cloning. So in this case, I've brought in a voice. Let's see if you recognize it. Hey, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Inside the Lab. We work on a lot of different technologies here at Meta, everything from virtual reality to designing our own data centers. Okay, so that's Zuckerberg's voice, right? If you can pick that out. So let's see that if we just go for a straight up thing where we're passing in the text that we want and we're passing in his voice as an audio prompt. Now, I've probably got quite a lot of his voice there, but you can really do it with probably around 15, 20 seconds to get a nice sense of his voice. So in this case, I've just got the default exaggeration and the default CFG in there. Let's have a play with it and listen. Text-to-speech, TTS, technology converts written text into spoken audio. 
It's fundamental for accessibility, powering screen readers, navigation systems, and virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. Standard TTS uses generic synthetic voices generated by algorithms based on general speech patterns. Okay, so it's not exactly him, but it's certainly pretty close to it. And if I wanted a female voice, I could stick in a female voice and condition on that. So really what you're passing in here is this audio prompt path. So you're conditioning you're using that audio as kind of like the conditioning prompt or the audio prompt, like they're calling it, that's going to condition the output. Now we can also do the exaggeration stuff just like we did with the audio prompt. So if you see here, we're basically just passing in the text, we're passing in the audio prompt, and then we've got our exaggeration and the class of free guidance weight in here. So in this case, I've not gone for something extreme. I've just gone for something that's going to it obviously exaggerated a bit, but not over the top. So let's have a listen to how this sounds. Technology converts written text into spoken audio. It's fundamental for accessibility, powering screen readers, navigation systems, and virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. Standard TTS uses generic synthetic voices generated by algorithms based. Okay, so you can hear that it still sounds like Zuckerberg, but definitely we've got the exaggerated bit. Now you want to be a little bit careful. One of the things I notice is that you can get artifacts at the start. So if you listen carefully here. Toast to speech, TTS. So it kind of says toast to speech rather than text to speech there. So be aware that that can happen, you know, at times as well in here. All right, so next up I wanna show you is what we can do is we can come in and look at the watermark of the audio or look to see if the audio has a watermark. And then we can use that to basically tell if the audio is fake or if it's real. So this is one of the technologies that Resemble AI has been working on a lot, is this ability to watermark the audio and then be able to look at it and say whether it's real or not. So you can see here, if we just take the generated audio that we had from earlier on, sure enough, it has no problem saying that was fake. The synthesized audio, again, no problem saying that was fake. But the recording that we brought in of Zuckerberg, that one, it says that the audio is real. So it's able to detect which ones are real, which ones are not. Now, what you can do is you can also compare different audios together. So if you had, for example, a real version of something and then something that's slightly different or something like that, you want it to be able to tell, you can actually plot these against each other. So here, what I've done is basically just make it so it's just getting the first 10 seconds, and then we can run these through and plot them out. And we can see the spectral differences if we wanted to try something like that as well. So overall, I would say that the Chatterbox TTS is definitely interesting, worth checking out. If you're planning on rendering something quite long, you probably want to render it in sections. And one of the repos that you can check out if you're interested in this is Chatterbox TTS Extended. So in here, they've basically got a whole version which allows you to put in text files, allows you to process them, allows you to put your output format, it also allows you to disable the watermark, etc. And it also does some sort of cleaning up with some of these things as well. So this is something that's worth having a play with if you wanted to build something like for creating audio books or sort of long form kinds of things. It doesn't have the same ability to do the two people podcasts and some of the other things that we looked at in Dyer and in the Gemini TTS. But it does have the ability to do voice cloning, which those other ones didn't have in the same way. So overall, I'd say if you're looking for something that's smaller than Dyer, perhaps more controllable than Dyer in many ways for what you want to get out, this is definitely something that you should check out. It's not going to give you the high quality that the Gemini TTS would give you, but this is an open model. This is something that you can run privately. It's something that you can run on your own machine, etc. And you can see looking at Hugging Face that people are already uploading GGUF versions of this. And even it looks like people are doing some things where they're working on Apple Silicon versions of it. So overall, it's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something like this. It certainly gives you a lot more control, though I do think you probably want to be a little bit sparing with how much you use the exaggeration. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.